Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will discuss about the transfer function. So name itself, it represents a transfer. It is transferring. Transferring means it transfers input into the output. Because every system, generally you know that every system has, its intention is to take the input and it should give the output. Okay. So the relation between this output and the input will give given by the transfer function yes a function which gives relation between the input and output is known as the transfer function here the output related to the input through a function is called the transfer function transferring which transferring input is transferred as output for example in our generation system in this generation input is mechanical power is input and electrical power is output this process yes this function is represented by a block so generally this function is represented by a, a block so for example a system which have the input take it as input generally in r of t and which will give some output that output is represents by the c of t and the relation between this the input and the output is represents by the transfer function represents by the transfer function that means input becomes output by using a function that is called the transfer function and if the input is represented by r of s and the output is represented by c of s then the transfer function we can write like this generally first we will discuss about the input and output that is if for any system generally we will consider like this the input is in time domain analysis we will take it as r of it what is the meaning of this r of a r of t if you are transform this it will become capital r of s what is this r represents small r or capital r small r or capital r meaning is generally input will be taken in the form of reference it is the input is called as the reference input that's why it is r of t or capital r of s r of t in time domain r of s in s domain frequency domain and the output is generally represents in the form of c of t or if it is transformed then it become capital C of S. What is this meaning? Small c and capital C is called controlled output. Control output. Why it is called control output? We are controlling the output by using some factors. That's why we are discussing the control system. So that is the reason input generally take in terms of R and output in terms of C. So here then the transfer function is represents like this generally the form transfer function is formula is laplace transform of input laplace transform of output by laplace transform of input laplace transform of input input means small r of t we have even condition that condition c is initial conditions become zero initial conditions become zero keep aside this is keep aside and directly we can write what laplace transform of in laplace transform of c of t become capital c of s it become and laplace transform of r of t is become capital r of s so therefore as simply we can tell in terms of words that is the transfer function is called as Laplace transform of output variable by Laplace transform of input variable Laplace transform of input variable As simply why because initially we will take the system in terms of time domain after that it will convert into the frequency domain simply the frequency domain of output by frequency domain of input or we are converting in time domain into the 
frequency domain okay so this is the definition of the transfer function so every system every system have this transfer function every system that is represented by the transfer function itself because it gives the relation between input and output input and output so in order to find out the transfer function we have two methods that is the first method is block diagram method and second method is signal flow graph method here block diagram method name itself in this transfer function each element of control system is represents by the blocks represents by the blocks simply name itself this block diagram reduction this block diagram reduction technique is used to find out the technique is used to find out the transfer function sometimes the he will give a question in terms of blocks that means like this he will give input and he will give some output he will represent the transfer function in terms of this then by using the reduction techniques block diagram having some reduction techniques by using the reduction techniques we can find out the transfer function from this directly we can write the transfer function this transfer function is nothing but the g that is the output is c of s and the input is r of s input is the c of s this is the one of the method we have more number of problems available to understand this is the block diagram method and to understand the transfer function and the second method is the signal flow graph signal flow graph here it's look like a signals and flow graph signal flowing graph generally this method is modified form of the block diagram method modified form of block diagram method so we have a block diagram method that means look at here in terms of it represents in the blocks but by modifying this block diagram method we will get the the signal flow graph method that's why this is the modification form of the block diagram method and we have a small difference between the block diagram method as well as the signal flow graph method block diagram method generally <coughs> block diagram method is nothing but it consisting of the pictures pictorial diagrams pictorial diagrams and signal flow graph method is it will this method will shorten form of the shorten form it represents in the very shorten form look at in a block diagram it's like a pictorial form but it is the shorten form very short form so the example of signal flow graph method is like this here look at the example rs and cs is there rs is generally you know that this is the input of the system cs is the output of the system rs and connected to this point one here one is the for example if you take this is one system if you consider this is the one system one is for the system this is the input and trans a is the transfer function and two is the output for the system for this particular system if you take another system if you take the another system for example this two and three system here two is the same thing input and for this three is the output and again b for the transfer function next so if you take the in this we, we can consider the another system here in this another system for this particular system 3 is the input and this c is the transfer function and this 4 is the output 
so this is the, the for this complete system rfs is the final input and cfs is the final output by modifying the all the system finally we will get the complete transfer function complete transfer function this complete transfer function we will get by using this signal flow graphs but cup in the block diagram method we have some techniques by using this we will do the reduction here signal flow graphs we will use these techniques okay but compare with the block diagram and the signal flow graph signal flow graph is very efficient method and very fast and method that's why it is very useful for uh, useful because in the short time we will get the transfer function from the given system okay so these are the two methods are for the to find out the transfer function from the system next next so up to now we will understand what is transfer function and what are the techniques to find out the transfer function here we have standard form of transfer function standard form of the transfer function look at here generally transfer function standard form is like this that k into s minus s1 s minus s2 s minus s3 by s minus s a s minus s b s minus s c this is the standard form of the transfer function and we have number of variables so each and everything we will represents like this so before that initially we will compare with the general transfer function model general transfer function what is the general transfer function model that is any transfer function is represents like this c of s by r of s okay and the another name is this is called as the g of s also so generally this transfer function is in the pictorial form we will represent like this we will give the r of s is the input that will give some system the system consisting of the transfer function by giving the input to the system we will get the output as c of s it is in complete it is complete in s domain otherwise you can write in the t domain also so the tra transfer function standard form is like this here k k is here first we have a term is the k k is gain of the system every system has some gain that is called k gain of the system and this s is representation of s domain all s terms here s1 s2 s3 are the you can call it as the zeros of the system zeros of the system represents by the zeros so generally zeros are nothing but available in numerator those are available in numerator is called the zeros all are all are different all are differed by the s terms yes next this sa sb sc sa sb sr poles of the system poles of the system so those uh, those are available in denominator is known as the poles of the system so these are available generally in denominator so standard form is like this so this is called the standard form of the transfer function standard form of the transfer function so generally a transfer function output by represent input but standard form is like this that is k into s minus s1 s minus s2 s minus s3 by s minus s a s minus s b s minus s here s1 s2 s3 are the zeros of the system s a s b s c are the poles of the system this is the standard form general standard form of the transfer function so again we will take some example by using that example 
we will understand this clearly so here we have an example look at here he given a system transfer function that is s plus 3 by s plus 2 s plus 1 for this first you have to notice which are poles and which are zeros first zeros available zeros available zeros numerators numerator is nothing but the zero that is just equal to zero s plus 3 equal to zero first is the s equal minus 3 where are the poles poles we have two poles one is s plus 2 equal to zero second one is s plus s1 equal to zero from this the first pole is s equal minus 2 the second pole is s equal to minus 1 this so we have 1 0 s equal minus 3 and poles are s equal minus 2 and s equal minus 1 so these poles and zeros can be represented in the s plane separately we have the s plane by using this s plane we will represent all poles and zeros so s plane is like this so we have a y axis as well as x axis as well as x axis this is the y axis and s plane so no need to write just take it as a s plane so take it some zero this is a zero point here s equal minus 3 so we have for example you can take minus 1 this is minus 2 and this is the minus 3 first value s equal to minus 3 represented here so so directly this minus 3 is 0 0 will be look like this simply look like this and pole is first pole is s equal minus 2 so pole is into mark represents by the into mark and the second pole the another pole is the s equal minus 1 so keep the pole also minus 1 keep this pole also minus 1 so this is the representation of the any transfer function so first you find out um, zeros and poles then these poles and zeros are represented in the s plane so this is the representation of the transfer function okay i think all, all of you understand this session clearly okay thank you